Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics. What's going on? Uh, I got another video for you today, and I had a few requests to show people if they could digitally paint in Manga Studio, uh, which, yes, in fact, you can paint in Manga Studio. I use uh, Photoshop for a lot of my digital paint work, but that doesn't mean a darn thing, obviously. You can use whatever you want. Uh, I've seen a guy throw paint at a wall, and it looked pretty messy at first, and by the end of the uh, painting, he had a picture of Einstein. So, whatever your medium is, just use it and have a blast. So, I'm going to kind of explain this. This is, uh, this is covering two topics at once. I also had somebody that wanted me to cover how do you do wrinkles and drapery. So, you see how I just kind of, you know, put them together. Boom, bam, boom. And I got two videos in one. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So, I'm going to keep this really basic to as far as the approach I'm taking. And it's kind of why I laid some of it out at first. I wanted to have a direction that I was heading with this. And then I wanted you to see that direction. I'll explain everything that I've already done here, which isn't much. Uh, but I, you know, I wanted to know that I could pull it off. Because I, I usually don't use this software for digital painting. But I'll tell you, it does have a lot of cool features. And it does perform it really well with little to no lag whatsoever. And that, that's a big one for me. Uh, if I can't flow through the drawing without waiting for the computer to catch up or something, I get really ticked off and I want to punch stuff. And, uh, you know, this equipment is a little bit expensive to feel that way. So I have to get up, walk away, go, you know, look at some butterflies in the yard or something and try to try to calm down. At any rate, so what I use here or what I'm using, I've got all these painterly brushes. I don't want to show you those because I don't want people going, where'd you get the brushes, Rob? How do I make me a brush like that? And I'm, that's not what this is about. So what I'm using is the G-Pen, right? Which that comes standard in Manga Studio. And it's great for inking. That's usually what I use it for. I turn the opacity way down to 17. So it looks like a marker. You know, as I overlay it, that's what I get, you know? Control Z back. Um, so, so I did that, like I said, because that comes standard in the software and I don't have to explain anything about brushes and things. Now I also, I work in a grayscale method. This is kind of how I do digital painting. You can paint with the color. That's also another way to do it. Uh, there's probably pros and cons to each. I can't really delve into that right now. Uh, but all I do is I, I just overlay the, uh, tonal value or the value like that. So I just keep darkening it. You know, there's my kind of, uh, let me zoom in and show you that a little better. There's my segmented kind of uh, gradient color effect, you know. So I just grab the blend tool. I use the blend for majority of it. You can see I got the brush density down to 28, color stretch to 38. You know, you can adjust all this and play with that. That's why I got the windows open so you can see that. So now I just blend that in. Now, right now I've got it kind of so uh, on the hardness right here. I've got it softer. So that's what's giving me more of this airbrush blend that I'm getting right there. Now if I change that to the other end of the spectrum, I'm going to get more of a, uh, what do you want to call this, um, a segmented kind of blend. Um, God, what's that called? It's using comics a lot. I'm an idiot. I can't think of that. Um, I'll, I'll use another term. It's like a posterized look where you have less transitions from your gradient, you know. Um, God, I'm really mad that I can't think of the actual term, but it, we'll, we'll use that. So it looks more posterized. It, it looks more segmented, whatever. If you don't like that, then you would just soften it and blend over it again. Uh, or you can grab a tone uh, in the middle here. You can hold Alt. This works a lot like Photoshop, too, just so you know. Um, it's kind of weird they allow that, but it, it's cool. So, uh, And you could just grab a soft brush. I'm not going to get in all the brushes, but more of an airbrush like this, and you could just grab the middle tone and blend side to side and soften that up if you wanted. So that's another quick way to do it. I like to just blend it by grabbing the blend tool. Uh, if I'm getting too much of a posterized segmented look, then I'll soften it up like that. And I, you know, I'm gonna go one end of the spectrum, maybe in the middle. And then yeah, I'll just blend that back and forth. So that's all I'm really doing to get my tonal value, you know, and my gradation or whatever. So now, once I do that, I just keep painting this back and forth. And I am looking at reference. Um, I've got that on my other screen uh, here on my computer room or whatever. I'm not going to show you that because I'm trying to focus on more of the technique that I'm 
going for and this is an actual photo that I pulled up to do this so you know I do recommend that for things like this to study photo reference and digitally paint you know maybe print it off stick it to the wall and work from that or do what I'm doing here with the multi you know multi screen setup and set it on the one screen uh, study it for a bit then come over to the other screen and work it out Just trying to soften up some of these edges okay so now one of the things that i take a notice of when i'm doing uh, wrinkles and drapery or folds or whatever is the way that the lighting reacts so with that pen i talked about uh i want to build up oh, switch back to black here i want to build up the uh, the darkness uh, below this bend so obviously what's going on here is the the wrinkle is going in and under this big massive area right here and it's creating a shadow uh, here so I'll darken that up quite a bit and you'll notice as I blend uh, it seems to ha have more of this effect in Manga Studio than I recognize in Photoshop when I blend here I actually have to start darker in Manga Studio because it, it blends down quite a bit um, so it lightens it as I blend so I can have this pretty dark in here and then as I start to blend this area it quickly lightens up um, pretty fast and I don't know if that's just the way I'm using it or what uh, it looks like it mixes the color a bit more than uh, I picture Photoshop doing but whatever that's just getting a feel for the software so I've got my heavy shadow there softening up some of my edge work there and as I'm studying the the wrinkle, what it does here, and I'll zoom up and kind of explain this, since this is a, you know, me trying to explain to you how to paint this stuff. You know, I want to picture mentally that this goes like this, and back down, and around like that. Okay, so that's my shape of the the fold. And there's nothing wrong with drawing a little reference line in there. You can put it on a different layer. Uh, I can blend this out, so I'm not worried about it. So what I'll do now is work on you know, building the shadows, uh, my highlight is right about here. So I'm going to build these shadows. There's a nice even gray right through there. I want a little bit more of a darker tone where it meets the other one, uh, meets the other fold that will actually be over it right about here. There's a lot of folds in this piece that I'm studying. And then begin to blend again. like so and one thing I do have to say about Manga Studio it blends really well really quick easy nice smooth blending so that's that's pretty cool like I've worked with some softwares and I can't remember because I ultimately would just always go back to uh, Photoshop um, and there was a few that you know I just wasn't a big fan of the way that it would blend maybe it would leave some uh, artifacts while you're blending that I didn't like or the the lag on the system was really bad all those things getting getting in the way of just creating and this one does pretty darn well I, I still I don't know I might like Photoshop just a tad more uh, for certain aspects of digital painting but that that's probably because I have about 20 times the amount of uh, if not more a lot probably a lot more a lot more time in on Photoshop than I have on Manga Studio as far as digital painting I've always used Manga Studio for my uh, comic book. Shameless plug time, Blackstone Eternal comic book. You can find it on Indie Planet. Thank you. Um, so, you know, I use it for that. But, you know, it doesn't mean, you know, it, it can't do, you know, equally as well as Photoshop and digital painting. Um, I just don't have the time in to really be able to attest to that. So it feels pretty good right here, though. So, so there's that. So I'm trying to get this bend going. I've started to build my highlight there. And again, you can just keep working in uh, passes of, of the value and then blending it back. Now, you can probably, I'm kind of almost scared to say this, but you can probably just find a brush that's, that's equally as well as putting this down so you don't have to go back and blend so much. But I'm not going to say that because I did say that. I'm sorry. I already said that. It's too late. But 
I don't want to get into that because what happens, I get a lot of comments when people are all consumed with the brushes, and that's why I use the most basic rudimentary brush. This isn't the greatest brush for it. See how it has a point and it gets fatter? I don't like that. That's, you know, and I need to learn how to disable that in Mango Studio. I'm, I'm positive you can. I just don't know how right now, and I'm not going to worry about it. But again, that's where I'm trying to show you that sometimes it's better to not focus on the brush and, and all the settings and just making work uh, what you have in your hand. You know, if you had a chisel and a hammer and a big block of ice, you know, if, as an artist, you're still going to figure out a way to make something cool out of that. So that that's what I'm getting at. You know, yes, you can get into all these brushes and settings and customization and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, in, at the end of the day, you know, did you really accomplish anything when you could have just kind of overcame that you know hurdle with your your art ability and that makes you a better artist so whatever you know that's just me ranting about that little particular but I get so many people that they're just like hey what brush are you using what brush are you using and it, it's just not and if you watch a lot of these videos you should hear these other artists they tell you it's not about the brushes the brushes actually sometimes get in the way you know if you um, lend yourself to them too much you know you might you know I guess you'll just be stuck if you don't just figure out how to create your own textures and your own, you know, you can draw most of this stuff in, is what I'm trying to say, I guess. So, on to something else. So, I just keep building this up. You know, you can, the other thing is, say, you, you know, you, you like this tone right here. You can pull that into the area that you want. So, if you're trying to sh change the look of the shadow and you want more of this tone over here, I'm just pulling in one direction. I'm not going back and forth because if I go back and forth, it's going to it's gonna blend it and soften it. I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to actually pull that shadow uh, into another shape, uh, another direction. So you can do that too. All right, so what else? And I you know, keep looking back at my, uh, my piece there. And forgive me for not posting that up, but, you know, again, I didn't want it to be, oops, control Z, hit X, you can go back to the other color. I like that too. You can hit X and go back and forth these just like Photoshop. Um, I didn't want this to be about, you know, you looking at how I'm judging the uh, the study of the, the work that I'm looking at. I wanted this to be more about me explaining the software, how it can digitally paint, and, you know, me telling you what I see when I look at uh, wrinkles and drapery. Not, you know, hey, watch me paint this. How good do you think I, I did at painting that? You know, that's not the purpose of this video, so... All right, so there's that. Let's back away, see if it's starting to take shape. Now the shadow looks too abrupt or, or solid. Uh, so what I'll do to fix that, I'll increase the brush size and I'll blend the, uh, the edge down a bit. I might even soften up that darker shadow. It looks a little bit too, too dark for that area. Okay, a little better. Yeah, and I think the shape was off too. That's why I blended some of this white up into there. That's the other thing to look out for is that if the shapes look too even, like see how this line looks like it just comes to a nice slow point right there and it's it's a little too even, it's going to probably break that up. Uh, you know, even something as nice as a silk sheet, which is what this is supposed to be, um, is going to have a lot of... Uh, you know, change in geometry. If it's too symmetrical or smooth and uh, perfect, it's going to look uh, fake. So, all right. So now, another thing is, by I, I want to show you how I work in grayscale. I put this other layer over top, and I believe we got it in overlay mode. But I work in the background layer here, and I just use this to, you know, let me know where my tonal value is. I'm not good at judging it just in grayscale yet. Maybe that'll come with uh, years of of working this stuff out. Uh, but I still work in black and white on the grayscale, this one to overlay, and I just keep adding, uh, you know, adding value, adding tone. So, darken this area right here. Okay, so there's another wrinkle that comes around here. Now, some of the shapes I want to talk about as you're doing wrinkles and drapery, obviously there's always stuff that goes behind and in front of each other, right? But you're always going to see shapes like this one right here. So shapes I want to talk about today, because if you listen to some of my videos, I always try to mention 
uh, you're you're trying to find form, find shapes, and in, in, in the various things, and then you won't have to look at reference so much. Um, so you see these kind of I'll call them you know a bean shape or something. You know these kind of bean shapes. One side will always be a little bit larger. It'll be this bend. You know, and that's that's kind of what I see here. I mean, this was a little bit smoother than that, and so is this one. But that's initially the shape. And then if you were to you know darken it, you kind of see this, and maybe this is another piece coming in front of it like that, and so on and so forth. So, so the the bean shape is one of them. Control Z back out of there. Um, let's see what other shapes I can see in here. Let me draw this next next fold and see what pops out. So this one comes up. It tucks under to here. Uh, I guess the other is this right here, this Y shape. You'll see that actually that's that's even more popular. You'll see this quite a bit. Um, so in, in wrinkles and folds, you always see this kind of Y. Uh, and this would be the highest point right about there. So you're going to shade it that way. So you're going to put shadows down below here. So essentially if I was to draw an imaginary line to show the depth, it comes up and around like this. And probably get smaller and smaller like that. So your highest point being there. So now knowing that, you know, and keeping that in mind as you're shading and adding your value, you can bring that out and, and not lose, you know, lose sight of that. So I'll just smudge and blend this back and forth. Like so. Okay, so this is our beginning part of the shape. Now, the other thing is this. It looks a little bit too perfect, right? You don't want just this perfect Y and it looks flat. Um, so now if you take part of this shadow, you bring it in and around like this. Now it looks a lot more like a, a fold. We'll soften this up. The other thing to keep in mind is no hard lines. Uh, even your even your hardest lines where your highlights are should really be a transition from light to dark. That should give you a line, not a specifically drawn line, uh, unless you're going for more of an animated comic book style. Okay, so there's that. And then now, um, I don't want to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and grab um, shadow brush or soft it's a soft airbrush and here's the airbrush tool obviously uh, I just want to paint this down a bit uh, it helps me you know see my highlights better or where you know where, where I want to take the form so what I'm going to do is just softly that's a little strong uh, brush density we'll take that way down yeah it's a little better I'm just going to softly paint in uh, some of my shadows here I'm probably going to tone down the whole thing too and this just kind of expedites the process for me. I can do this by painting these all in with hard lines and then blending them down. Um, and I like doing that generally because it, it gives you more texture. Um, but for this process or this video, just to kind of flow through this a little bit quicker and show you what I'm trying to show you, I'm just going to go ahead and paint some of this in there real fast. And the other shape you're always going to see is these little these little loops. They're kind of like the bean shape, but they're, they're just a... A loop and a you know a fold kind of thing right there, you know, like you're seeing right here. And I guess the other thing is once the material changes its direction uh, and then comes out like this, it just tends to flatten out just a little bit. So you want to show that too. Okay, so there's that. That'll just shorten the time it takes to do a lot of that. And then areas where it's too dark like this, I would just go back and and blend that up a little bit. The other thing to keep in mind is you don't want to end up with overly airbrushed looks uh, like you see over here. If this whole drawing was done like this area right there, um, it wouldn't be as appealing. Um, I know a lot of uh, like art directors uh, really do not like that kind of look, so um, kind of try to shy away from that. You really want to use your hard brushes and learn how to blend and stuff like that and only use the airbrush sparingly because um, they, they actually frown on airbrush work for whatever reason so 
even the, the really good airbrush guys tend to do mixed media. Even though they could pull off all of it with an airbrush, they, uh, they mix media and it looks a lot more polished and professional. In my opinion. And you know what, I'm going to grab that airbrush one more time, turn the density way down. Just need to, need to drown this out a bit. Those highlights are just too in your face. All right, so another thing I'm noticing here, this area, that, that line is too strong. So I gotta soften that up. So I'll blend that back and forth. This one too. And see, I'm going with the, sh with the line itself, you know. If I wanted to add texture to this and create, you know, some grit, then I'm gonna go back and forth and maybe chop it up a bit or something but for right now I'm just trying to soften the line uh, keep the shapes at this moment so I go with the shape that's already there and just move the tone around a bit okay so now you know I'm trying to overall get to this look right here so I grab the same G pen with the white. I'll go ahead and paint uh, the outer, you know, the the surface that's closest to the uh, the light source, like so. Now here I want to add a little bit of grip. Uh, the reference I'm looking at is a uh, silk sheet, uh, kind of folded across the edge of a bed and just kind of clumped up over the bed, which is you know cool for. Uh, you know neat looking folds or whatever is why I picked this out um, it's got a little bit of grit and texture especially in the highlight areas a little bit in the dark areas but you, you see more of the texture in the highlight on this particular uh, material so what I'm going to do is as I'm painting the highlights I'll zoom in so you can see I'm not trying to be real uh, uh, finessed or pretty with it I'm trying to grit it up a bit and then I'm going to do a little bit more of that too. You know, I'm going to blend this so a lot of this is going to go away, but I figure as I'm in here I can kind of see what it looks like to add some little dots like I'm seeing in the, the sample. It's basically just the glare off the, the material. Now one of the things I, I would say to take notice of is when you're doing a, a more specular kind of material, the transition from the, uh, the light to dark is more, um, uh, what's, what's the way to put that? It's more condensed. So your your highlight to your next tone, to your following tone, to your, to your darker tone, is all very condensed and, and quick. You know, where if this was more, this is a fabric, so it has a little bit of distance from the highlight to the shadow, but if it was, say, a, a cloth sheet, there would be a greater distance from the specular highlight. So, I guess what I'm trying to say is since this is a soap material, the specularity is more condensed and and brighter in one spot. So th those are the kind of things that you take notice of when you're, you know, studying a material and trying to recreate it and you're you're learning the material. You know, how how does the uh the highlights work? Is there a lot of specular highlights um for instance on on a uh, a regular cloth material depending on the color too? Uh, probably is going to be a lot less of a um, of a strong highlight. It's going to be a, a more subdued overall highlight over the entire material. Uh, since this is more of a silk, it's going to have a, a stronger specular highlight like we're trying to create here. Now the other thing to bring that out, like I said, it has a bit of a grit into the highlight. So what I would do in this case, I'd grab this pencil brush and this one's a dust shader. Um, again, you're going to have to figure out how to make those or get those. Uh, that's not what this tutorial is about. Um, I want to say you can get some really nice brushes, and these may even be it from uh, uh, just Google Frendan. It's, uh, I believe, F R E N D A N, Frendan. Um, but, you know, and, I'm, and you could probably pull off making something pretty quick. You could even just draw these in. 
spot. Since this will speed it up, I'm just going to put in some of that texture real quick. Like you said, I did over here a little bit. And not a lot. You don't want it to, you know, you want it to almost not be noticeable once you get to about this distance from the painting. Uh, but what that does is it's more resemblance of this silk texture um, that I'm looking at on the screen. So in the highlights, I'll just kind of paint that in a little bit into the darker tones, not much. It's mainly in the, um, the highlighted areas, like so. And then I can flip that back by hitting X, and I could paint a little bit into the, the darker areas also. And you want to do this part more towards the end of the drawing. You can do a little bit of it in the middle or as you're going. But if you're still doing a lot of blending, you're going to basically waste that time and energy a little bit because you're going to blend that out. So, you know, I'm not I'm not going to take this to a, a really finished rendition. Uh, this is mainly, it's already getting kind of lengthy. This is mainly just to explain to you how I would digitally paint in Manga Studio. And uh, also the, you know, how I would... Uh, come across and, and get wrinkles and drapery or how I understand wrinkles and drapery uh, as I'm looking at the subject matter. And again, it's it's a very specular material, so I would just I'd probably really get in there and keep adding these highlights. I think that's one of the things that looks really neat about silk. Uh, I'll show you one last thing before I, I wrap this up. Um, but again, I try to envision the, the highest point of the material because that's where the light's going to take the most effect. And I just keep painting back and forth to try to try to bring that out. I think that a certain area like right here, this bend obviously overlaps this part of the, the Y I, we talked about. So I would do more of a shadow that wraps around that part of it and then back under like this. And then blend that a bit. Like so. And I just keep doing that. I mean, I'm not I'm not the greatest digital painter. I mean, you probably see that by now. You're probably like, uh, duh, Rob, I can tell you're not that great at it. But I, but I basically, I just keep going. I, I guess what I, what I lack in the ability or foresight in digital painting, I make up for in hard work and perseverance. Because I will literally just keep drawing on something until I get it right. Uh, where a lot of people probably walk away and throw their hands up in the air and go, eh, I think I'm gonna, you know, be a professional lawnmower. But I, uh, I don't. I just keep sticking it out, and it's, it's that's where the passion comes in. So I won't get all deep on you or nothing like that. But that's, uh, that's basically where I think art. You know, an artist excels. I, I do think that anybody can become an artist, but the passion that you have for it will ultimately dictate how much time you put into it and therefore make you, you know, better than your competition and stuff like that. So, bam, that's my knowledge for you. So, you know, this I could keep progressing this, obviously, you know, and add all these dark spots like I got right here. I kind of like that. It actually richens up, richens up the... Uh, the look of this so I'd probably just keep you know grabbing the furthest area like this and keep painting in some darker tone to bring out the depth in this piece okay and that one last little tidbit I want to share with you uh, I found this when I was doing one of my digital paintings of my Blackstone comic <clears throat> sorry I know you guys probably hate the fact that I keep talking about my comic book but I'm gonna because you know what that's why I started this freaking channel. Um, so at any rate, like back over to here, I'm going to add one more layer. Uh, I think I'd put this over top. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll drop it on top just to, you know, make sure. But now what I do here is I put this on, what is it, Lighten, I believe? I haven't done this in a bit. Or is it Add Glow? I think it's Add Glow. Let's try this. And then I'll grab the airbrush. I'll put it on highlight. I don't think it matters. I think it could just be an airbrush. But I'll put it on the white here. 
and it paints in kind of these new uh, nice little highlights it's a little bit strong let me soften that up but I rather I can erase the edges it's one of the things I like about um, let me try to soft if it still does it yeah I don't like it like that that's probably better really but let me go back to highlight yeah it's it's a little strong but let me paint it in actually let me zoom back just a hair and where's that right here all right highlight okay so let me drop down the brush density maybe that'll help yeah there we go that's a little better it's just blazing in there a little bit too much so it gives you this really cool highlight what it reminds me of is when you're working in Photoshop use the dodge tool to bring out some of your highlights and it's really quick and kind of fun you got to actually make sure you don't overuse it and you know it's got to be sparingly uh, that you use it same same here I would say um, so it's a quick way to bring out some highlights and you know if you always do that extra layer like I just did it's what I call a non-destructive approach you can always kind of backpedal and you know fanat fanatle with it that's not a word um you know fiddle faddle with it adjust it anyways <laughs> and then uh get to where you want to be with it so so yeah at any rate i just want to show you that real quick i've i figured that out one day in uh in manga studio and I, I was like man there's there's that awesome dodge tool that i always use in photoshop so at any rate i'll let you go hopefully you've enjoyed this video hopefully it's helped you get a little bit closer to what you're trying to achieve with this stuff uh, be sure to like and subscribe. Please share the videos. That's how I uh, keep this channel progressing. And uh, let me know what you liked, what you didn't, so I can always make the channel better. And uh, if you got any questions, be sure to comment because I do make it a point to uh, answer everybody. So thanks very much for watching. Keep drawing. Keep having fun.